Today I thought I'd bring you along on an explore of five radio sites in Cheshire which I've always found interesting for various reasons. They're not all particularly linked, but they all sit within a close proximity to each other, and all have varied histories, and have been used for a multitude of different things. We'll take this route, but in a particular order. We'll start with Kelsol RX, then head over to Kelsol TX. From there we'll move over to Newton, then Frodsham Hill, before finishing at Pale Heights, so let's go. This is Kelsol RX, but what does that mean? Well, it's a National Air Traffic Services Receive site, RX standing for Receive. It's part of a system which relays data and voice communications between aircraft and the Scottish Area Control and London Area Control. These are both centres which control aircraft movements over the UK between 2,500 feet and 66,000 feet in altitude. There's quite a bit of history here though prior to this current incarnation of the site. From here we can see the other sites we'll visit in this video. Just outside the compound we can see today was Ray Cal Vodafone site number 115, a small hut built in 1985 just across the lane to the main gate of the Nats compound. It was a radio base station for analogue mobile phones and disappeared at the end of the analogue era, leaving no trace today. 2003 saw the construction of an RMDF. It formed part of a network of fixed remote monitoring and direction finding, or RMDF systems, that were established at strategic locations around the UK. These stations were controlled from the Radio Communications Agency and later Ofcom's listening post at Baldock Monitoring Station in Hertfordshire. They provided monitoring and direction finding capabilities which were shared with other Ofcom users, and when networked together, provided accurate position fixing capabilities. These resources were used to investigate interference complaints, helping to keep the spectrum clean. Typically, shift engineers in the operations room were able to monitor almost anywhere in the UK at any time, day or night, allowing them to provide a swift initial response to affected customers, particularly those providing safety of life services. There's only one known photo of this mast, but it would have been identical to the now defunct site up on Wernert Low in Hyde. These RMDF systems operated over a frequency range of 20 MHz to 3 GHz. As well as being available for real-time manual remote monitoring, they could also be scheduled for automated monitoring and measurement tasks to capture intermittent interference activity for later processing. They could make accurate measurements of frequency, bandwidth, modulation depth, frequency deviation, field strength level and angle of arrival. The RMDF sites were rolled out by the Radio Communications Agency, with 24 implemented by 2005, which were inherited when it was amalgamated into Ofcom. In its infancy, the network was projected to encompass over 2,000 sites. The permanent system, which was much smaller, was approved in 2004 and installed in 2006, however a temporary setup did exist beforehand. The dome on the top of the mast housed either a Model 641 or 643 antenna made by TCI International. This works over a range of 20 to 3000 MHz and is designed for applications requiring an antenna capable of handling both vertical and horizontal signal polarizations. 
The DFRA at Kelsall Nat Station was most likely the Model 643, which consists of nine dual polarised antenna elements that are housed in a plastic radome. The radome includes broadband monitoring antennas and a broadband RF switch. The VHF portion of the DF array consisted of five vertical dipoles and was mounted just below the radome. Frodsham RMDF provided a huge area of coverage from its elevated vantage point until it was removed in late 2014 as part of an upgrade of Ofcom's RMDF and UMS capability. Today the level of spectrum coverage Ofcom has is bigger than ever, they just use different systems. So back to the Nats radio station. This has been here for many years and this picture from 1963 shows the original tower we saw in the plans of the site. It lasted up until 2014 when this and the radio monitoring tower were both taken down and replaced with the newer 25 metre tall one we see today. Aeronautical radio stations like this provide analogue voice and data communications with aircraft operating in the VHF Aeronautical Mobile Service allocation between 117.975 and 137 MHz. Kelsall RX is a receive station which is similar to many other NAT sites across the UK. They typically consist of a single storey brick building that houses numerous transmitters or receivers and a radio mast. This one is used for both civilian and military air traffic control. Now, there is some gaps in my knowledge on the receive side of things. I'm assuming they gather and send or relay traffic elsewhere. What we have are eight folded dipoles towards the top of the tower and further down four of these Chelton 978-900 folded monopole antennas. These consist of a brass folded monopole enclosed in a robust fiberglass cylindrical radome mounted on a skeleton ground plane made from four aluminium radial rods inclined downwards and four curved rods. Also on the tower is a pair of shrouded log periodics that appear to be pointed towards Manchester Airport and a microwave link that points to its counterpart transmission site which we'll come to next. At the base of the tower is a brick building which consists of the main equipment room, a former toilet behind the entrance door and a former battery charging room which I assume was used for battery backups in years gone by. The whole compound is surrounded by very tall fences and barbed wire and I certainly wouldn't recommend trespassing here. If we move 5 miles to the south, we come to Kelsall TX, the transmission counterpart of the site we've just left, and they're very similar. Transmit and receive sites are kept separate in order to avoid desensitisation. If we travel back in time, we can see a tower of similar design to the early tower at Kelsall Receive. The mast at Kelsall Transmit is also used for both civilian and military air traffic control. It contains eight of these Cobham 978-900 folded monopole antennas which operate between 225 and 400 MHz UHF. They're designed to handle powers of up to 1.2 kW and are of a similar design to the Chelton version at Kelsall Receive. Like the Receive site, these antennas are used by military air navigation service providers who would normally provide UHF support to OAT or operational air traffic flights. 
OAT missions include air-to-air -air refuelling, air combat manoeuvring and general military training flights. Further up the mast are 12 VHF folded dipole antennas, which are used for the general VHF air traffic services linked to Scottish Control and London Control. We can also see the reciprocal microwave link pointing back towards the receive site, and another microwave link which I can't be certain on. I think it may be part of a T-Mobile mass share here, that was implemented in 2009. The main building here is much larger than Kelsall Receive, presumably due to this being a transmission site that uses many more aerials than the Receive site. Again there's tall fences and barbed wire, and trespassing really wouldn't be wise here. Moving on on our disjointed trip of these radio sites, we come to Newton, just 0.3 miles to the southeast of where we began. In fact, you can see the next stop on our journey from the Kelsall Receive site. I wonder if we can get a closer look at that aircraft warning lamp. Stay tuned. On the way, I stopped off to view Kelsall Receive from a distance, as well as another stop on today's trip, 3.7 miles away, at Old Pale Hill. This is another old site that predates our 1960s view of Kelsall Receive. It did contain three towers, but at some point one was removed. We have a larger tower that's reminiscent of the old gas board type, and a slightly smaller tower next to it. Hutchison and Microtel, later Orange, installed a large array of microwave antennas on the larger of the two towers in 1994, that sent signals relating to the analogue telephone network to numerous other sites. I don't have much in the way of historical info on this 35 metre tall tower, and the only identifiable feature is this microwave link that appears to send data as part of the police airwave radio system. Travelling up the tower, we can see some other unidentified microwave links, and not much else, but the top is where all the action's happening. There's a couple of vertical antennas that could be part of the Tetra Airwave police system. 
they tend to use these sets of stacked folded dipoles connected via a phasing harness, but looking at the Greater Manchester Police Headquarters over in Manchester, there are verticals here too. The booms the antennas sit on make a great vantage place for local wildlife, but the highlight for me is this beautiful warning lamp complete with quite a modern LED bulb. I wonder how often this needs changing, and who has the job. At the base of the tower is an equipment hut. Moving over slightly to the smaller tower, there's not a great deal on here nowadays except a vertical, a large possibly low band VHF folded dipole, and a pair of four stack dipoles. I can't find out any information on this. You can just about make out a transco sign on the cabinet, but the other one was obscured by the glare from the sun. Remember earlier how I said the larger tower was similar to the British Gas or Gas Board type towers? Well, Transco is the former name of National Grid Gas, so this explains things a little bit. It appears that some microwave links or other form of antenna were added to this 30.5 metre tower in 1975 at various heights, presumably for part of the Gas Board's communication links. If anyone has any more information on these towers, then let me know. Moving on now, we come to Frodsham Hill radio site, one that I've covered extensively in another video, so we'll keep this part short. These towers have been here for many decades. At one time, this tower was home to two repeaters used by Frodsham and District Taxis on low band VHF, a band that's virtually empty nowadays. These days it's still home to a handful of repeaters owned by DCS, which serve local businesses such as skip hire, waste disposal and haulage companies. These are all on VHF and appear from a bit of monitoring to all still be in use. The masts are surrounded by brick huts that house supporting equipment and are also predominantly used by the mobile phone companies. There's conduits built into the ground using concrete slabs to take the coaxial feeders up to the antennas on the mast. This hut houses an old CB antenna, which is still in pretty good shape. If anybody knows what this was actually used for, then please let me know. It looks like a Thunderpole 3, and I'd guess it was probably used for some sort of data or telemetry link, or even alarm monitoring at the hut many decades ago. The newer mast however is home to a lot of mobile phone infrastructure, with an abundance of cellular panel antennas, as well as microwave links. There's also a stack of folded dipoles that are used by the police as part of their Tetra Airwave communications network. There's many microwave links here belonging to companies such as EE, Vodafone and MBNL for their mobile voice and data. Cheshire West and Chester Council also have a lot of microwaves here too, for their data services, alarms, CCTV and telemetry. Joint Radio Company has links heading over to various places such as substations as part of their network serving the national grid. One link from here goes to Sutton Hall Water Treatment Works, which is a police airwave link. One is owned by Rapid Computers Limited and heads over to Billinge Hill, and another one goes to Warrington Council, and I'm sure by now you get the idea that this site is really busy from a microwave point of view. Perhaps even more interesting than the radio towers is the Frodsham AAOR, a semi-sunken Cold War bunker, which I'll link a video on in the description below. And finally the last stop is Pale Heights, the home of a large BT tower that was at one point full to the brim with huge microwave dishes. It sits on the top of Old Pale Hill, and today is used primarily by the mobile phone companies for cell service and microwave backhaul. There's also many other links for other purposes here, and two home office radio towers, but for the full story, and how somebody may have tried to blow it up, I'll link a video in the description below, to save me repeating it all here. So, I hope you enjoyed this tour of these Cheshire radio sites. If you want more like this, then let me know in the comments. If you have any more information on these places, then let me know in the comments too, or drop me an email.